It's not often that you can find an almost untouched Nazi-era building, particularly one that is closely associated with Adolf Hitler. But that is exactly what exists today in Munich, in Bavaria, a building with a fascinating history that played a central role in the events that led to World War II. That building is the Führerbau, or Führer's Building. Built between 1933 and 1937, it stands close to the Königsplatz, a neoclassical square containing a series of royal museums in the heart of Munich. The Nazis used the square for grand parades and mass rallies, and a series of NSDAP buildings were either built adjacent to Königsplatz, such as the Führerbau and its near-identical twin, the Verwaltungsbau, der NSDAP, or the Administration Building of the Nazi Party, or the Brown House, the former Victorian-era Barlow Palace purchased in 1930 as the national headquarters of the party, now no longer standing. In front of the Führerbau and Verwaltungsbau buildings, the Nazis erected so-called Ehrentempel, or Honor Temples, where the tombs of the Nazis killed in the 1923 Beer Hall Putsch were displayed. Only the foundations of these buildings remain today. Please see my video that covers this fascinating subject, link in the end screen. Inside the Führerbau is Hitler's office where, on the 30th of September 1938, British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain and French Premier Édouard Deladier, in the presence of Hitler, Benito Mussolini, Hermann Göring, Joachim von Ribbentrop and other leaders, signed the infamous Munich Agreement, whereby Hitler was handed the Czech territory called the Sudetenland in the hopes of preventing a new world war. Unfortunately for Britain and France, the appeasement of Germany at the expense of Czechoslovakia only emboldened Hitler, and would lead, ultimately, to the eventual German takeover of all of Czechoslovakia in 1939 and the German invasion of Poland, precipitating World War II. Hitler's office in the Führerbau is therefore of great historical interest to the people of all the countries I've just mentioned, and of international significance due to the terrible conflict that became inevitable once Chamberlain and Deladier had bent over Hitler's desk to sign the agreement. But unsurprisingly, the scene of such momentous events is today hidden from view. But I was determined to see it myself, and with my wife as my willing co-conspirator, we decided to launch a raid on the Führerbau and get inside Hitler's old office. We'll probably get turfed out soon. Unlike so much of Munich, much of the Nazi architecture managed to somehow survive the Allied bombing campaign and the battle for the city, which was captured by US forces on the 30th of April 1945, the very day Hitler killed himself in his Berlin bunker. The US Army used the Führerbau and adjacent Verwaltungsbau, both buildings having deep and extensive bunkers beneath them, as the central collecting point, where art treasures, looted by the Nazis and recovered by the Americans, were stored and catalogued, before being returned to the institutions or individuals that own them. More recently, the Führerbau has become the University of Music and Performing Arts Munich, as a university, it is not open to the public, and therefore some subterfuge would be necessary to get inside. Fortunately, my MI6 training enabled me and my wife to bypass the building's cast-iron security by the simple expedient of following in some students, whence we proceeded to pose as either mature students or dashingly youthful professors as we began our attempt to reach and film Hitler's office. Entering the Führerbau's grand atrium, the building is almost unchanged from Hitler's day, with its original fixtures and fittings. Red marble staircases and floors and neoclassical pillars abound, and it's clear that no expense was spared in the materials used to construct it. The Nazi flags and busts are of course long gone, but the effect that the Nazis intended this building should have on visitors remains. This was the Führer's building, large enough for him to entertain visiting heads of state, conduct diplomatic talks, and awe visitors with the power and taste of the National Socialist State. Climbing the grand staircase puts you in the shoes of Neville Chamberlain and Edouard de Ladier in 1938, as they climbed up to conduct what they thought to be an action that would preserve peace in Europe. Light streams into the open, airy building from huge skylights. 
A few pieces of original wooden furniture remain scattered about the hallways and landings, students scurrying to and fro between classes down halls at once rang to Nazi jackboots, most probably oblivious to the building's dark history or significance. Instead of Hitler's speeches echoing from the building's Congress Hall, where Nazi leaders once gathered, this room has now been converted into a concert hall for student music performances, the sounds of instruments echoing around the huge building today. After exploring the building fairly thoroughly and without arousing any suspicions, I decided to locate Hitler's famous office. It would obviously be a large room located at the front of the building, at the top of the main staircase and there was indeed a pair of double wooden doors leading somewhere directly opposite the top of the stairs above the main entrance. Checking online just to be sure, Hitler's office is currently labelled as room A105. Throwing caution to the wind, I wrenched open the door to be met by another set of wooden doors just inside, maybe an early form of soundproofing. Opening these, I walked into Hitler's office finding that I had blundered into some kind of student-teacher meeting. Excusing myself in German, I did see the large fireplace at one end, before which Chamberlain, Hitler and Deladier had signed the Munich Agreement, before I backed out of the room, hopefully preserving my cover. Unable to photograph the large room myself, here is what it looks like today, from someone else's work who did manage to get into the room. Mission partly accomplished, my wife and I next crossed the street to the former Verwaltungsbau building to investigate inside. This building, superficially similar to the Führerbau, was the administration building for the NSDAP. Gaining access was much easier, as the lady porter at the front simply waved us inside. This building, now an art school, that displays a collection of copies of ancient marble statues used for drawing instruction. The building itself is different inside in layout from the Führerbau, but retains the grand marble, the high-quality build, and most of its original fixtures and fittings. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. Also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.